Hello, I'm out here at the mountain trying to get the top because I need to take some measurements. And I'm just starting. And this thing is uh, right here, the drift is probably two or three feet deep right there. And it was a pain just to get to there. Even with chains, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be going up here. I'm gonna try to see if I can just walk the rest of the way up. It's gonna take me a while. But it's pretty nasty. Walk on the edge, it's not so bad, but we got some pretty good drifts here. Well, I'm up to my knees. Just on the edge right here. I still got a long ways to go. <sighs> Haven't had this much snow on the road for a long time. There is a lot in this area. One of the biggest problems with the road here is this is a north uh, facing slope on the mountain. And even if the ambient temperature is well above freezing, because the road creates sort of a, how do I say it? An air path that uh, is like a river. What ends up happening is even though the ambient air is hot, it comes down and it starts melting the snow above and gets cold. When it gets cold, it starts to flow down the road. And then it just gets it colder and colder until even though like maybe 20 feet or 30 feet away, it can be 50 or 60 degrees. Right here, it could still be 30, 30 32, 33, 34 degrees uh, because the cold air just follows here and creates just sort of a uh, um, an insulation blanket of cold air. So uh, you can see some melting here. Now you know it's still crunchy. The only melting we're getting here is because we got direct sun rays hitting dirt and the dirt is melting it down but then just freezing above it because it's still pretty frozen here. When we get up a little higher, we get to a uh, west facing and we'll have less snow, hopefully. And then hopefully it'll peter out. But if this section of the road does not melt, we can't, get, we can't even get to the next section. So I might have to figure something out try to get this thing uh, clear to the snow. Well, up here at the uh, pullout, there's a lot of animal tracks up here. It's an animal highway. Got all sorts of different animal tracks. Yeah, just tons of different ones. Like birds, coyotes, rabbits. Deer, longhorn sheep. Saw some uh, cow tracks, but I don't see them right here. I think there, I think there's some over there. This west-facing part of the road's not nearly as bad. There is a little bit of a drift, but it's almost goable with the four-wheeler. Right here, if I stay, would be able to stay here at the edge. Looks like all the animals have churned it up enough that it was melting a little easier right in this area. Let's keep going. See if we can go all the way up. Whew. Sweating big time. I had to take a coat off and just in like a t-shirt. <sighs> Catching my breath and now I'm almost at the top, but I got to be... Huge drift right in the center here. This sucker's a biggie. Right in the middle. Yeah, I haven't seen drifts this big for quite a few years. It was considering we didn't really get much snow. And uh, the amount of snow out here wasn't that much, but 
it doesn't take much to blow a three, four, I think there's about four or five feet right there. Probably about five feet right in the center. But other than that, the west side is pretty much uh, open to an ATV. But until that lower section melts down, can't even get up to this part, this point. <sighs> Whew. I'm out of breath, but I made it to the top. Huh, not much snow up here. That's an inch or two on the flats. Well, at least I'll be able to take some of the measurements and uh, see if I can find some of the wind turbine parts. That'll be really good if I can find those. Uh, I have to pack them down. I have to look for a backpack. And as everybody knows, I used to have a place that had a bunch of backpacks, but not now. So, I'll see what I can get. I'll have to just pack all the stuff down on my back. A few drifts in this area. There's a pretty big one right there. That one's, uh, take up to my waist. One, two, three, three and a half feet thick. Yeah, that's pretty big. Uh, and there she be. The first look at it since all the storms hit a month ago or so. Actually, two months. <sighs> ah, I just come in. Uh, I got a little bit of snow in this hall. And it's a sort of a drop off right there. Well, up here on the roof, measuring the opening for one of the wind turbines. Uh, and then measuring that, they're, they're basically the same. One's slightly bigger, so yeah, 64 and three quarters. <laughs> Just writing on a piece of wood. And then this door right here, uh, I've got the measurements for that. So those are like two things, like uh, three things, but mostly only two types of things that I can work on. And uh, looking at all this. Everything should be just fine. Looking at it, so that'll slide that way. That was a okay. I just had to make sure because there's going to be some shutters that slide that way. So there's there's just enough room to the corner because one shutter is going to go halfway and the other shutter that way to close it off. All right. Now I got the measurements. Next thing to do is I want to grab some of the wind turbine components. I'm gonna have to look around for those and see what I can find. Well, I found uh, at least the, the base of the uh, old, one of my wind turbines. This came off the Air 403. This one had a bigger hub on it. But uh, this is one that I converted and took the diode pack out and ran the wires to here. So what I need to do uh, is in the one building uh, behind me here. But uh, with the shop gone, the winds hit it and it's damaged the roof, which is not, not nice because I got some stuff in there getting into my uh, tool, some of the replacement like electrical tools, some of the electrical stuff. So it's not good. Not much I can do about it now. Uh, but uh, just uh, some more damage that I got to fix on the roof. But uh, I'm going to look at here, see about whether I'm just going to, I want to carry this whole thing down. I think I'll take the uh, 
the uh, generator part off and we'll take the old 403 just for just for fun so i'll basically take that that hub unfortunately yep like the hub that was on there and the blades there was a complete blade set it was in the uh, shop that burned uh, because the blade assembly is sort of large and i remember putting it on top of one of the big shelves so this is all i have which is not too bad because i can make a new hub that's not that difficult uh, and i'll design it just to fit perfectly with this uh, unit right here so let me take it apart and then we've got a hike back down the mountain and I found me an old bag, backpack. I'm going to load up the stuff, head down, and hopefully be able to leave the mountain because I had to drive, I couldn't drive the car on the road. I had to drive sort of on the road, off the road to get around the mud because it is nothing but mud. So I'm going to head down the mountain now. Well, it is a beautiful view. <sighs> wow. Cool shadow. Made it down. And uh, got my parts there. Uh, mud all over the car. Now it's uh, getting down to the main road is going to be fun. So well, if I stay off on the left, I think I can make it. That looks to be enough for today. I am going to uh, try to head down, hopefully not get stuck. And on another video, I will go through this, take a look at it. Uh, I just had wires coming out for the three phase. Might have to think about uh, doing some sort of plug on it. And then making a new hub. And uh, there'll be some um, new designing on that. But uh, I've got all the measurements on my board right there. Uh, I could be able to start making the hub and all the uh, windmill blades. And then uh, I'll need to order some metal and make out all the frame and all the whole assembly to hold the, uh, uh, the generator. And uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a couple wind generators ready to be mounted when the weather clears. So... Thanks everyone for watching. Please subscribe, please like, it really helps. And uh, you all have an awesome weekend.